Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're diving deep into a subject that often feels like a mountain to climb for step one, microbiology and immunology. It's a crucial area, and honestly, it can be pretty intimidating. But here's the thing, it's also incredibly high yield. This isn't just some niche topic. It consistently appears on the exam, making up a significant portion of your questions. Mastering micro and immuno isn't just about passing, it's about significantly boosting your overall score. Think of it as a solid chunk of questions that you can absolutely nail with the right approach. We're going to break down what you need to know, what you can probably skim, and how to approach this beast effectively. Let's get started on making this section a strength for you. First up, bacterial identification. This is foundational. You absolutely need to know your gram stains and bacterial shapes cold. Gram positive cocci, gram negative rods, these are your bread and butter. Beyond just morphology, understand the key virulence factors for common bacteria. What makes Staph aureus so dangerous? What toxins does Clostridium produce? These details are often tested. Familiarity with classic bugs is non-negotiable. We're talking about Strep Numa, Staph aureus, E. coli, Salmonella, and Clostridium species, among many others. Know their typical presentations. Understand their mechanisms of action. How do they cause disease? Is it through exotoxins, endotoxins, or direct invasion? This mechanistic understanding is key for clinical correlation. Finally, link these bugs to the diseases they cause. Don't just memorize lists. Think about the clinical picture. This helps solidify the information in your mind. Next, let's talk viruses. You need to understand the different virus types. Is it DNA or RNA? Is it enveloped or non-enveloped? These characteristics dictate a lot about their behavior and how we treat them. Knowing viral replication cycles is also critical. How does a retrovirus like HIV integrate into the host genome? What's the difference between lytic and lysogenic cycles for bacteriophages, and how does that apply to human viruses? Understand how viruses cause disease. Do they directly kill cells, induce an immune response, or transform cells? Think about the pathogenesis behind common viral infections. Familiarity with common viruses is essential. Influenza, HIV, the herpes viruses like HSV and VZV, and the hepatitis viruses A, B, C, D, and E are all high yield. Know their key features and clinical syndromes. For each, consider their transmission, typical symptoms, and any unique diagnostic markers. This holistic view will serve you well on exam day. Fungal infections might seem less common than bacterial or viral, but they are definitely tested. Know the common fungal infections and their typical patient populations. Understand fungal morphology. Are they yeasts, molds, or dimorphic? This distinction is important for identification and understanding their growth patterns. Recognize the clinical presentations of key fungi. Think about Candida and its various manifestations, Aspergillus in immunocompromised patients, and Cryptococcus causing meningitis. Don't forget the endemic fungi like Histoplasma, Blastomyces, and Coccidioids. Know their geographic distributions and the diseases they cause, especially in immunocompetent individuals. Focus on the most common and clinically relevant species. While there are many fungi, the exam tends to focus on a core set that you'll encounter in practice. Immunology is a beast on its own, but mastering the basics is crucial. Understand the fundamental differences between the innate and adaptive immune systems. What are the key players in each? Know the roles of T cells, B cells, antibodies, and the complement system. What are their primary functions? How do they interact to protect the body? For T cells, differentiate between CD4 helper T cells and CD8 cytotoxic T cells. Understand their activation and effector functions. For B cells, know their role in antibody production and memory. How do they get activated? And what is class switching? The complement system is complex, but focus on the classical, alternative, and lectin pathways. Know their initiators and the key downstream effects, like opsonization and cell lysis. Finally, hypersensitivity reactions are a must-know. Understand the four types, type 1, anaphylactic, type 2, cytotoxic, type 3, immune complex, and type 4, delayed type. 
and be able to identify examples of each. Vaccines are a cornerstone of public health and a high yield topic for step one. Understand the different types of vaccines available. What's the difference between live attenuated and inactivated vaccines? Know their mechanisms of action. How does each type of vaccine stimulate an immune response? What kind of immunity do they confer? Be familiar with the diseases preventable by vaccination. This includes the standard childhood immunizations as well as vaccines for specific populations or travel. Consider the risks and benefits of each vaccine type. For example, why are live attenuated vaccines generally contraindicated in immunocompromised individuals? This section often ties into immunology, so understanding the immune response to different vaccine components will strengthen your knowledge. Now let's talk about what you can afford to de-emphasize. Time is precious and you need to be strategic. Don't get bogged down in rare or obscure organisms. The exam focuses on common pathogens and clinically relevant scenarios. While it's tempting to learn every detail, prioritize the high yield bugs we just discussed. Similarly, avoid getting lost in the weeds of in-depth biochemical pathways for every single microbe. Focus on the big picture and clinical relevance. How does a particular pathway contribute to virulence or drug resistance? You don't need to memorize every single detail of every single antibody. Instead, focus on the major classes, IgG, IgM, and IgE. Understand their primary functions, locations, and when they are elevated. For example, know that IgM is the first antibody produced in a primary response. IgG crosses the placenta. These functional distinctions are what matter most. So how do we tackle all this information effectively? First, utilize good resources. First aid is absolutely essential for step one, and it provides a fantastic framework for micro and immune. Supplement first aid with dedicated textbooks or review materials if you need more depth on a particular topic. Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm are also incredibly popular and effective for many students. Prioritize and focus on high-yield concepts. Use your question banks to identify what's frequently tested. Don't spend hours on a topic that rarely appears. Practice extensively with questions. New world is crucial here. It's not just about getting the right answer. It's about understanding why the correct answer is correct and why the others are wrong. Make clinical connections. Always try to link the microbiology to the clinical presentation. How does Staph aureus cause cellulitis? How does E. coli lead to UTIs? This makes the information more memorable and relevant. Understand how organisms cause disease. This goes beyond just memorizing symptoms. Think about the virulence factors, toxins, and host immune response. Finally, employ mnemonics for remembering key facts. Micro and immuno are full of lists and details, and mnemonics can be lifesavers. Create your own, or use popular ones that resonate with you. Microbiology and immunology can be tough, and we all struggle with different parts of it. What are your biggest struggles with this subject? Share them in the comments below. Also, if you have any favorite mnemonics that helped you conquer a particularly tricky topic, please share them. We can all learn from each other. If you found this guide helpful, please give the video a like. It really helps us out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Step 1 content and share this with your study buddies who might be feeling overwhelmed. Remember, mastering this subject is absolutely achievable with the right approach and consistent effort. It might feel like a lot right now, but you've got this. Keep studying, keep practicing, and you'll be well on your way to step one success. Good luck with your preparations.